Hello everyone, this is Dr. Simone Atkinson, again with another video to help you prepare for the NCLEX. Now this video includes questions on the gastrointestinal system. I have prepared over a hundred facts for you to know that you should already know to help you succeed in answering NCLEX questions. So pay attention and let's get started. Proton pump inhibitors can increase the risk of Proton pump inhibitors can increase the risk of Clostridium difficile, C. diff, infection. Common proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, include Common proton pump inhibitors include prazoles such as omeprazole, lansoprazole, and others. What is docusate sodium? Docusate sodium is a stool softener used to relieve constipation. What is a possible side effect of metoclopramide? A possible side effect of metoclopramide is tardive dyskinesia, a movement disorder. When are pancreatic supplements taken? Pancreatic supplements are taken with or just before every meal to aid in digestion. What will chronic pancreatitis show in stool? Chronic pancreatitis can result in the passage of greasy, foamy, foul-smelling, and fatty stools. How will stools look with biliary obstruction? Stools with biliary obstruction often appear light gray or clay-colored due to the absence of bilirubin in the digestive process. Give an example of liver dysfunction abnormalities. Liver dysfunction abnormalities may include low albumin levels, high ammonia levels, elevated INR slash PT, increased bilirubin, and low platelet counts. What is the priority nursing care for acute pancreatitis? The priority nursing care for acute pancreatitis includes keeping the patient NPO, nothing by mouth, providing four opioids, four fluids, and inserting an NG tube for suction. What are the signs of hepatic encephalopathy? Signs of hepatic encephalopathy can include early symptoms like sleep disturbances, lethargy, and later symptoms like coma, altered mental status, asterixis, flapping tremor of hands, and the distinctive musty, sweet, and slightly fecal odor of the breath, as well as elevated ammonia levels. What is asterixis? Asterixis is the medical term for flapping tremors of the hands. How is asterixis assessed? Asterixis is assessed by having the patient extend their arms and dorsiflex their wrists. What is a barium enema, also known as a lower GI series? A barium enema, or lower GI series, is a medical imaging procedure that uses fluoroscopy to visualize the colon outlined by contrast. Material. It is used to detect abnormalities such as polyps, ulcers, tumors, and diverticula. What are the pre-procedure instructions for a barium? Enema? Before a barium enema, patients are typically instructed to take a cathartic, such as magnesium citrate or polyethylene glycol, to empty stool from the colon. This is usually done the day before the procedure to prepare the bowel and avoid dehydration. Patients are also advised to avoid consuming red or purple liquids. They should be NPO, nothing by mouth, for at least 8 hours before the test. Some abdominal cramping may be felt during the procedure. What are the post-procedure instructions for a barium enema? After a barium enema, patients may experience chalky white stool until the barium passes through their system. They are often advised to take a laxative, such as milk of magnesia, to help expel the barium. Drinking plenty of fluids to promote hydration and consuming a high-fiber diet may also be recommended. What should always be at the bedside for a gastric lavage? For a gastric lavage, intubation and suction supplies should always be readily available at the bedside. Why is gastric lavage done, and how soon after an overdose? Gastric lavage is performed to remove toxins from the stomach and to irrigate it. It should be completed within one hour after an overdose to be most effective. What are some signs of a bowel obstruction? Signs of a bowel obstruction may include nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension, and decreased stool output. What position is used for enema administration? 
The SIMS position is commonly used for enema administration. What position is used after a liver biopsy? After a liver biopsy, patients are often placed in the right side position to apply pressure to the liver. What is intractable diarrhea? Intractable diarrhea refers to chronic diarrhea that is challenging to control. How often should ostomy bags be changed? Ostomy bags should be changed every 5 to 10 days. When should an ostomy bag be emptied and at what level of fullness? An ostomy bag should be emptied when it is one-third full. Where should you look for jaundice in dark skin patients? In dark skin patients, jaundice can often be detected on the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet. How is hepatitis A transmitted? Hepatitis A is transmitted through the fecal oral route. How is hepatitis B transmitted? Hepatitis B is transmitted through blood, semen, and vaginal secretions, think B4 body fluids. What are the early symptoms of hepatitis B? Early symptoms of hepatitis B are nonspecific and include malaise, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. What are the later signs of hepatitis B? Later signs of hepatitis B include jaundice, yellowing of the skin and eyes, weight loss, clay-colored stools, and thrombocytopenia, low platelet count. What does abdominal surgery and bowel manipulation cost for the bowels in the first 24 to 48 hours? Abdominal surgery and other procedures with bowel manipulation often result in absent bowel sounds. How are absent bowel sounds determined? Absent bowel sounds are determined by listening for 2-5 minutes in each quadrant of the abdomen with a stethoscope. In what foods is gluten found? Gluten is found in brow foods, which stands for barley, rye, oats, and wheat. It is important to read food labels of all processed foods, as some may contain hidden gluten. What is included as important education for celiac disease? Important education for celiac disease includes informing patients about the necessity of a gluten-free diet for the rest of their lives. This is because gluten can damage the small intestines, which are vital for proper nutrient absorption. What are some gluten-free carbohydrates for celiac disease clients? Gluten-free carbohydrate options for celiac disease clients include rice, corn, and potatoes, as these foods are naturally gluten-free. What are the symptoms of hepatic encephalopathy? Hepatic encephalopathy is a complication of end-stage renal disease, ESRD, that results from the buildup of ammonia in the blood. Symptoms may include lethargy, confusion, slurred speech, and can progress to coma. It's essential to watch for hysterixis, which manifests as flapping hand tremors. What medication is given for hepatic encephalopathy? Lactulose is given for hepatic encephalopathy because it helps get rid of excess ammonia in the body. How can stress ulcers in critically ill patients be managed? Stress ulcers in critically ill patients can be managed by initiating enteral feedings. What are some signs of a bowel obstruction? Signs of a bowel obstruction include nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension, and decreased stool production. Can you describe diverticular disease and its impact on the GI tract? Diverticular disease involves the formation of protrusions off the large intestines. These protrusions can become inflamed and infected, leading to a condition known as acute diverticulitis. What is the care for acute diverticulitis? The care for acute diverticulitis includes letting the bowel rest to allow inflammation to subside. It often involves administration of intravenous, 4, antibiotics, as bacteria may contribute to flare-ups. Patients should be kept NPO, nothing by mouth, receive 4 fluids to prevent dehydration, be on bed rest, and may require nasogastric, NG, suction. Procedures that put pressure on the abdomen or increase peristalsis should be avoided, as they could potentially perforate or rupture the diverticula. What is metronidazole, flagyl? Metronidazole, commonly known as flagyl, is an antibiotic used to treat various bacterial and parasitic infections. What is pyrosis? 
Pyrosis is a medical term for heartburn characterized by a burning sensation in the chest that rises towards the throat. What are some examples of proton pump inhibitors, PPIs? Examples of proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, include prazoles such as omeprazole, lansoprazole, and pantoprazole, among others. What can long-term use of PPIs cause? Long-term use of PPIs can lead to decreased bone density, increasing the risk of fractures. It can also contribute to the development of Clostridium difficile C. diff, infections. What are some ways iron deficiency can occur? Iron deficiency can result from various factors, including diets that are low in iron, such as vegetarian diets, conditions where iron is not being absorbed effectively, e.g., after abdominal surgery or in cases of malabsorption syndromes, increased iron requirements, or significant blood loss. What are some iron-rich foods? Iron-rich foods include meats, e.g., beef, lamb, liver, chicken, and pork, shellfish, e.g., oysters, clams, and shrimp, eggs, green leafy vegetables, broccoli, dried fruits, dried beans, brown rice, and oatmeal. How can the absorption of iron be enhanced? The absorption of iron can be enhanced by consuming foods rich in vitamin C, such as citrus fruits, potatoes, tomatoes, and orange juice, as they can help improve the body's ability to absorb iron. In cystic fibrosis, what enzymes are deficient due to blocked pancreatic ducts in the GI tract? In cystic fibrosis, pancreatic ducts are blocked in the gastrointestinal tract due to thick secretions, leading to a deficiency of pancreatic enzymes. What is included in the cystic fibrosis diet? The diet for individuals with cystic fibrosis typically includes high-calorie, high-fat, and high-protein foods to meet increased energy needs. Can you describe ulcerative colitis and its symptoms? Ulcerative colitis is characterized by inflammation and ulceration in the large intestines, which can cause symptoms such as urgent, frequent, bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, anorexia, and anemia. In clients with alcoholism, which vitamin are they commonly deficient in? Clients with alcoholism are commonly deficient in thiamine, vitamin B1. What can thiamine deficiency lead to? Thiamine deficiency can lead to Wernicke encephalopathy, a neurological disorder that affects brain function. What intravenous drug should all intoxicated patients be given? All intoxicated patients should receive intravenous thiamine before or with intravenous glucose to prevent or treat thiamine deficiency. What is the positioning for paracentesis? The positioning for paracentesis is upright, semi, or high fowlers to help access the abdominal cavity for the procedure. What is bile? Bile is a digestive fluid produced in the liver, which helps aid in the digestion and absorption of fats in the small intestine. Why is throwing up green vomit an emergency? Throwing up green vomit is considered an emergency because it indicates the presence of bile in the vomit, potentially signaling a bowel obstruction. While giving an enema, if the patient reports cramping or pain, what should the nurse do? If a patient experiences cramping or pain during an enema, the nurse should pause the procedure for 30 seconds and then resume at a slower rate. What does lactulose do? Lactulose is a medication that decreases intestinal ammonia absorption and is commonly used in patients with liver disease and hepatic encephalopathy. What should a client be having daily as a result of taking lactulose? A client taking lactulose should have two to three soft stools per day to help manage hepatic encephalopathy. What is the TIPS procedure used for? The TIPS, transjugular interhepatic portosystemic shunt, procedure is used to treat esophageal varices, which are dilated blood vessels in the esophagus. What is spironolactone and what is it used for? Spironolactone is a potassium-sparing diuretic used in liver failure, ascites, fluid buildup in the abdomen, and edema to promote diuresis and reduce fluid retention. What are examples of proton pump inhibitors, PPIs? Examples of proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, include pantoprazole and omeprazole. 
PPIs are prescribed for the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, ulcers, and ulcer prophylaxis. For which conditions are intravenous proton pump inhibitors given? Intravenous proton pump inhibitors are administered for gastric ulcers and in cases of upper gastrointestinal bleeding. The liver is highly vascular. What should the nurse watch out for after a biopsy? After a liver biopsy, the nurse should monitor for signs of bleeding due to the liver's highly vascular nature. What are signs of bowel perforation? Signs of bowel perforation include abdominal pain, often with shoulder tip pain, positive rebound tenderness, guarding of the abdomen, abdominal distension, and a board-like or rigid abdomen. What are the normal expected findings after a colonoscopy? Following a colonoscopy, normal expected findings may include cramping, gas, and watery stools. What does acute right lower quadrant pain, nausea, and vomiting, and a high white blood cell count most likely indicate? Acute RLQ pain, along with symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and a high WBC count, is most likely indicative of appendicitis. This condition often requires emergency surgery since the appendix could rupture. What does gastric lavage or having the stomach pumped mean? Gastric lavage involves the insertion of an orogastric tube to remove toxins and irrigate the stomach. This procedure is rarely performed except in cases of overdose. It should be completed within one hour after the overdose. Gastric lavage carries a high risk of aspiration or esophageal slash gastric perforation, so intubation and suction should always be at the bedside and the patient's head of the bed should be elevated or the patient should be positioned on their side. What is a magnetic? Resonance cholangiopancreatography, MRCP? Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, MRCP, is a non-invasive diagnostic imaging test that uses magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, to visualize the biliary, hepatic, and pancreatic ducts. It is performed after the administration of contrast, intravenous gadolinium, to enhance visualization. What are some contraindications for the MRCP procedure that the nurse should assess beforehand? Before an MRCP procedure, the nurse should check for contraindications, including the presence of any metal or electrical implants, a history of allergic reactions to contrast agents, and pregnancy, as the contrast can cross the placenta. What is the nursing care for NG tube feeding? Nursing care for NG tube feeding includes elevating the head of the bed, HOB, during and after feedings, checking for gastric residual every four hours with continuous feeding or before each intermittent feeding slash medication administration, flushing the tube before and after bolus feedings, aspirating but returning the aspirate to the stomach, checking for excessive residual volume, and starting feeding after getting a residual volume less than 100 milliliters. Additionally, the gastric pH should be acidic, typically less than 5. What two things should be done before and after giving a feeding or medication through an NG tube? Before and after administering a feeding or medication through an NG tube, the nurse should check the tube's placement and flush the tube with water to ensure proper delivery. What must be done after NG tube placement? After NG tube placement, an X-ray should be performed to confirm the tube's correct location. What should be watched out for after a kidney and liver biopsy? After a kidney or liver biopsy, the nurse should closely monitor for signs of bleeding, as both the kidneys and liver are highly vascular organs. What must be done before? And after a kidney biopsy? Before a kidney biopsy, all antiplatelet and blood thinning medications should be discontinued for one week. A type in cross match should be performed in case blood transfusion is needed. During the procedure, the patient is placed in a prone position. After the biopsy, vital signs should be monitored every 15 minutes for the first hour. The patient should be positioned on the biopsy side to apply pressure, and bed rest is recommended for 24 hours. What is partial thromboplastin time, PTT? Partial thromboplastin time, PTT, measures the time it takes for your blood to clot. 
What does an elevated PTT mean? An elevated PTT indicates that it is taking your blood too long to clot, suggesting a potential coagulation factor, deficiency, and an increased risk of bleeding. What is the therapeutic PTT range? The therapeutic PTT range is typically 1.5 to 2 times the normal reference range, which is usually 25 to 35 seconds. Thus, the normal therapeutic range is about 37 to 70 seconds when considering the multiplication. Do patients with liver cirrhosis typically have low platelet counts? Yes, patients with liver cirrhosis often have low platelet counts, thrombocytopenia. In acute cholecystitis, where may pain be experienced? Pain in acute cholecystitis may be felt in the shoulder area, known as referred pain. How is hepatitis diagnosed based on liver enzyme levels compared to normal? Hepatitis is typically diagnosed when liver enzymes are elevated to 2 to 3 times the normal reference range. What is lopiramide used for? Lopiramide, Imodium, is an antidiarrheal medication used to treat diarrhea. What does black stools, melina, indicate? Black stools, melina, suggest upper gastrointestinal bleeding. After gallstone surgery, can referred pain occur? Yes, referred pain may occur after gallstone surgery. Is the liver highly vascular and at risk of bleeding after a biopsy? Yes, the liver is highly vascular and at risk of bleeding after a biopsy. What are some ways to prevent constipation? Preventing constipation can be achieved by increasing fiber intake, drinking plenty of water, engaging in regular exercise, and avoiding straining during bowel movements. What is ondansetron, Zofran, used for? Ondansetron is an anti-nausea medication used to prevent and treat nausea and vomiting. What is the treatment for aspirin poisoning? The treatment for aspirin poisoning typically involves the administration of activated charcoal and, in some cases, intravenous sodium bicarbonate to correct acid-base disturbances. What are the symptoms of acute appendicitis? Symptoms of acute appendicitis include right lower quadrant, RLQ, pain that is continuous, anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, rebound tenderness, guarding, and a need to prevent increased abdominal pressure, such as avoiding coughing, sneezing, or deep breathing. What is a barium enema used for? A barium enema, also known as a lower gastrointestinal, GI, series, is a radiological test used to visualize the colon by outlining it with a contrast medium. This procedure helps detect abnormalities such as polyps, ulcers, tumors, and more. What are the preoperative teaching instructions for a barium enema? Preoperative instructions for a barium enema include taking a cathartic to empty the stool from the colon, following a clear liquid diet the day before the procedure for bowel preparation, avoiding red or purple colored fluids, and fasting for at least 8 hours before the test. Patients may also experience abdominal cramping during the procedure. What are the postoperative teaching instructions for a barium enema? Postoperative instructions for a barium enema include the expectation of chalky white stool, due to the contrast medium, the use of a laxative like milk of magnesia to help expel the barium, drinking plenty of fluids to stay hydrated, and consuming a high-fiber diet. Is the normal albumin range approximately the same as potassium? No, the normal albumin range is different from the normal potassium range. The typical normal albumin range is 3.4 to 5.4 grams per deciliter. What is the normal range for ammonia levels? The normal range for ammonia levels is typically 15 to 45 micrograms per deciliter. What laboratory levels are indicative of abnormal liver function? Abnormal liver function is often associated with changes in laboratory values such as albumin, ammonia, platelets, international normalized ratio, INR, and bilirubin. What can low albumin levels cause? Low levels of albumin in the blood can lead to fluid overload, resulting in symptoms like edema, weight gain, and ascites, fluid buildup in the abdomen. What can high ammonia levels cause? 
High ammonia levels in the blood can lead to hepatic encephalopathy, resulting in symptoms such as confusion, lethargy, asterixis, flapping hand tremors, and even coma. What are the signs of increased bilirubin levels? Increased bilirubin levels may manifest as jaundice, yellowing of the skin and eyes, scleral icterus, yellowing of the scara or whites of the eyes, and itching, pruritus. What medication is used to decrease ammonia levels? Lactulose is commonly used to decrease ammonia levels in patients with liver disease, particularly those at risk of hepatic encephalopathy. What are the three classic symptoms of intussusception? The three classic symptoms of intussusception include intermittent severe crampy abdominal pain, a sausage-shaped mass in the abdomen, and the passage of current jelly-like stools. Additional symptoms may include inconsolable crying and drawing the knees up to the chest. What is a sign of pyloric stenosis? A sign of pyloric stenosis is the presence of a mass in the abdomen that causes projectile vomiting. What is the correct position for a liver biopsy during and after the procedure? Before the procedure, the patient should be positioned supine with the right arm above the head. After the procedure, the patient should be in a right side lying position with a pillow placed under the puncture site to apply pressure. This position helps prevent bleeding. What is the correct position for rectal irrigation and enema administration? For rectal irrigation and enema administration, the correct position is left side lying, which promotes gravity flow in the natural direction of the colon. What are the risk factors for colon cancer? Risk factors for colon cancer include a family history of the disease, a history of irritable bowel disease, IBD, such as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, a diet high in red meat, obesity, alcohol consumption, and smoking. What nutrients are found in cow's milk? Cow's milk is a source of calcium and vitamin D. It does not contain vitamin K, iron, or fiber. What does coffee ground emesis indicate? Coffee ground emesis is indicative of an upper gastrointestinal, GI, bleed. What are the steps for inserting an NG tube? The steps for inserting an NG tube include measuring, marking, and lubricating the tube, instructing the client to extend their neck back, inserting the tube just beyond the nasopharynx, instructing the client to flex the neck forward and swallow, advancing the tube to the marked point, and verifying the placement of the tube while anchoring it to the nose. How should an NG tube be measured for insertion? To measure an NG tube, you should start from the tip of the nose, extend to the earlobe, and continue down to the xiphoid process. What should the pH be when aspirating from a tube? The pH of aspirated contents from a tube should be 5.5 or below. What are the characteristics of stool in acute pancreatitis? Stool in acute pancreatitis is often described as fatty and foul-smelling. Describe diverticulitis in diverticular disease. Diverticular disease involves the presence of sac-like protrusions off the large intestine. Diverticulosis is usually asymptomatic. When these protrusions become infected or inflamed, it is referred to as diverticulitis. What can clients do to prevent constipation and reduce the risk of diverticulitis flare-ups? Clients can prevent constipation and reduce the risk of diverticulitis flare-ups by following a high-fiber diet, consuming adequate water, 8 glasses daily, engaging in regular exercise, reducing intake of red meats and high-fat foods, and gradually increasing fiber intake, which is generally well-tolerated. Is paleness around an ostomy area a priority concern? Yes, paleness or grayness around an ostomy area is typically a priority concern as it may indicate a lack of blood flow to the stoma, which requires immediate attention. What is docusate? Docusate is a stool softener. What is sodium polystyrene sulfonate used for? Sodium polystyrene sulfonate is used to reduce high potassium levels in the blood. What are the diagnostic criteria for IBS, irritable bowel syndrome? The diagnostic criteria for IBS include recurrent abdominal pain or discomfort occurring for at least three days per month in the last three months, along with at least two of the following criteria, 
improvement with bowel movements, changes in the frequency of stool, or changes in the form of stool. What are the goals for managing IBS? The goals for managing IBS include reducing diarrhea or constipation, alleviating abdominal pain and stress, and managing symptoms through dietary modifications, medications, exercise, and stress reduction. What patient teaching is essential for managing IBS? Patient teaching for IBS should include avoiding gas-producing foods, example, bananas, cabbage, onions, caffeine, alcohol, honey, high-fructose corn syrup, and other foods that may exacerbate GI disturbances. Gradually increasing fiber intake is often recommended. A high-fiber diet may be generally well-tolerated, especially regarding protein, bread, and bland foods. What nursing interventions can help reduce pain after a hemorrhoidectomy? Nursing interventions to reduce pain after a hemorrhoidectomy may include administering NSAIDs, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, instead of opioids, to avoid worsening constipation, offering warm sits baths, promoting a high-fiber diet, encouraging increased fluid intake, and providing stool softeners. What happens to the body during fasting? During fasting, the body enters a starvation mode, leading to a decrease in metabolism and an increase in cortisol, a stress hormone. The body may break down muscle and convert amino acids into glucose. Fasting can result in fluid loss, depletion of essential nutrients, and various symptoms such as fatigue, headaches, dehydration, dizziness, and muscle weakness. What is the desired effect of lactulose? The desired effect of lactulose is to improve mental status in patients with hepatic encephalopathy by reducing ammonia levels. Is it true that lactulose reduces ammonia by trapping it in the gut and then expelling it with a laxative? Yes, it's true. Lactulose reduces ammonia levels by trapping it in the gut and facilitating its expulsion through bowel movements. High ammonia levels can lead to hepatic encephalopathy, which results in mental confusion.